What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the rest of this week and heading off for the rest of March in 2019. And we're also going to be talking about whether or not I traded today. You saw the title of the video. Did I trade today? I didn't trade today. We're going to be talking about that in today's video. Before we do get into these topics, guys, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really does support the channel and supports me in general. And if you're new to the channel and you want to stay connected with our community, there are two links down below in the description box, one being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group both of those are 100% free and I guarantee you guys you'll find valuable information in there the discord group chat has about 600 people right now 650 something like that I haven't counted up the people in a while but there's a lot of valuable information there about trading investing stocks news strategies and all of the stuff that we're talking about and discussing here on my YouTube channel so without further ado guys let's talk about and go over here what is going on in the overall markets? And we do have about 45 minutes left in the market at the time that I'm recording this video. So we're going to be able to see some live market action. So as of right now, the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies is up about $9.30, up about 0.33%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, is actually down a bit today, down about 0.3%, down about $85 right now with about 45 minutes left. And the NASDAQ had a pretty solid day, is having a pretty solid day so far today, up up about 0.5%, up about nearly $40 on the day. So let's go back over here to the SPX, the S&P 500, so we can draw out some resistance points and we can talk about where we are potentially headed in this index. So we all know by now, especially those of you guys have been following my channel for a while, I do these market updates, market breakdowns every single day throughout the week, that there are resistance points in the SPX from back in the middle or really the beginning of November in 2018, the beginning or rather the middle of October and the uh, end of November. These are points of resistance because we clearly topped off at these points a couple of months back and we sold off from there, making them resistance levels that we need to break out of in order to test the all-time highs, which in this case for the S&P is at around 2940, right? We can see here in the beginning of October, that's where we ended up topping off. And we notice now that this level, and again, we've been talking about this pretty much every single video over the past couple of weeks and months here, this point at 27.90 and this point at 28.15, they are very strong resistance levels that the SPX has been struggling to get above. And if we take a look here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, we can see, you know, how difficult it's been for this index to break out. You know, we saw some difficult breaking above that first resistance we finally broke above it here and then we got rejected twice the double top that we talked about a couple of videos ago you know at the next resistance which is at about 28.15 and then from there we saw that three percent retracement last week roughly I believe yeah 3.2 percent from about 28.15 down to about 27.22 and of course you guys saw yesterday the market absolutely killed it and today we're seeing a bit of a slowdown, right? We're not as heavily green as we were yesterday. I believe the SPX was up like, you know, maybe 1.5% yesterday. And today, even towards the end of the market here, we are selling off, you know, the SPX right now is up $7. So it's slowly climbing down, really telling me, that this level right here is still intact as a resistance. Really, this whole area from about 2790 to 2815, that is an area where we're having difficulties, you know, getting out of. So 
Guys, if we take a look back here at the 184 hour chart, we notice a red candlestick starting to form here close to the end of the market. I'm sure this is probably the latter half of the day that we've been falling down here or really just consolidating strong and slowly starting to fall down. We can see at about 2.15 p.m. Eastern Standard about an hour ago, that is when we started to fall down in terms of the SPX. We broke the 180 SMA support here, the 50 SMA support, and now we're seeing the 50 the SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, which we know on every single time frame, or rather on any time frame we look at, and we see this crossover of the 50 SMA below the 180 SMA, that is a bearish crossover, right? And we're noticing how quickly these candlesticks are falling right now. We can literally see it's $6 and falling. And my guess, guys, towards the end of this video, we're probably going to be heading towards the break-even point in terms of the SPX. And we'll hop back here in about 10-15 minutes before we wrap up to see where we currently are or where we are in about 10-15 minutes in terms of the SPX. Now, let's take a look at this five day, five minute chart, we noticed the big pop up like we talked about yesterday and today was really a slowdown. And for the first half of the day, really for the first couple of hours of today's trading session, it was looking like we were holding that 29 or 2790 level as a support level like we did a couple of weeks back you know, right here, right? We noticed we held the level of support a couple of days here, and now it's looking like we're doing that again, which, you know, the latter half of the day is showing that we could potentially break below this level, which is not going to be too good of a sign for the SPX. And of course, we're going to see, you know, in the next 40 minutes where we're going to end up closing. So overall, guys, what am I waiting for? What am I watching for here in the SPX? I want to see, are we going to end up holding this heading into the close of the market, the 2790 level, or are we going to start to pull back to test the 50 SMA support, or maybe even this trend line that I do have drawn out here, are we going to start to sell off towards that maybe tomorrow, the next day? These are things I'm watching if we do end up breaking into the 2780 level, maybe the mid 2780, maybe back into the 2770 level in terms of the SPX. So we noticed, you know, the two strong days, really that one strong day yesterday really brought the SPX high. You know, in my opinion, we need to see a little bit of a pullback here to bring the RSI down a bit and really to make, you know, a better per, uh, potential buying opportunity in some larger cap stocks as swing trades. That is what I'm personally looking at right now. I do think we might be pulling back, you know, heading to the end of the market here and maybe potentially, you know, heading into tomorrow. So the SPX right now, it's looking a bit flat, guys, up nearly 0.2%. Nothing crazy. And the Dow Jones is dropping pretty heavily right here. So notice the difference in the Dow Jones and the SPX. Let me quickly go back here. The 50 SMA on the SPX has been broken above on the 184 hour chart. And the main difference here is the Dow Jones has yet to break above the 50 SMA. It's actually acting as a resistance. And today's pullback and the continuous pullback heading into the close of the market here, we're seeing it's dropping pretty heavily right now. This is cons uh, you know, confirming really that this is a strong resistance and we could potentially be heading more down in terms of the Dow Jones. And I'm sure a lot of you guys already know by now, but Boeing stock is a heavily weighted stock in the Dow Jones index. And they had another plane crash a couple of days ago. A 737 went down in Ethiopia, which is actually the second Boeing plane that has crashed in a six month window. And we saw Boeing stock tanked, right? Tanked yesterday. It ended up having a nice run up back to $400. But today we ended up tanking again down about almost 6.57% down about $25 right now in Boeing stock. And this is having a huge weight you know, on the overall Dow Jones, which is why the Dow is actually the only red, uh, you know, index out of the three that we follow on this channel. So tomorrow, what am I going to be waiting for, guys, in, in terms of the Dow Jones? Well, I'm going to be waiting for a couple of things here. Are we going to head down in price, which is going to be determined by the break of this trend line that I've drawn here and the continuous rejection of that 50 SMA? Or 
Are we going to have a recovery day tomorrow? Meaning, are we going to push up green to break out of the 50 SMA resistance here and to potentially test the next resistance, which in this case is going to be at around 25,800, which was a resistance from back in the beginning of December. We obviously sold off from about 25,800 all the way down to 21,700. We all remember the bloody, bloody December that we had. And, you know, when we sold off from here, obviously that made this point a new resistance level and we haven't really fully broken out of that or broken out of that since we broke out of it a couple of weeks ago here in uh february of 2019 so i'm going to be waiting for you know, a potential pop above the 50 SMA and a pop above that resistance to continue the uptrend pattern or a potential push to the downside here, which is actually going to be forming that head and shoulders pattern that we've been talking about over the past couple of videos. Do you guys remember when I was talking about how the Dow Jones and the SPX, well, the SPX now, the head and shoulder pattern is kind of out of the question because we had a, a decent green day today. Well, so far at least, but the Dow Jones, if we end up selling off off here that's going to be a head and shoulders pattern the left shoulder the head and then the right shoulder would be right here if we do end up selling off tomorrow breaking this trend line but as of right now guys at the time that i'm recording this video on a technical or a technically speaking basis we are still on that uptrend pattern we're still holding higher highs higher lows. This is the higher high here and the higher low it has been made at about $25,200 which is a higher low from about $25,000 which really on a technical basis guys you know that indicates that we're still on that uptrend but the huge break of pattern here would be if we do end up breaking down breaking this trend line forming that head and shoulders pattern and Honestly, breaking that $25,000 flat level, that's going to be a huge reversal to the downside. And from there, we could see some action, you know, more bearish action here. And we could continue to sell off in terms of the Dow Jones. So that is what I'm looking at. Really, guys, there's going to be some critical movement tomorrow, which is going to determine are we pushing up? Are we pushing down? So keep an eye on those points that I talked about. And now the NASDAQ composite, guys, we all know the tech stocks, especially Apple and Facebook, have been doing absolutely amazing over these past couple of days. Apple is back into the 180s today, guys. I believe it hit like 182 or something. Let's take a look here, about 183, 182. And we all know the NASDAQ is a tech-heavy index, meaning whenever the tech stocks are doing well, you can probably guess that the NASDAQ is doing well as well. And that's why we saw a huge day in the NASDAQ yesterday. And we're seeing a pretty solid day today, um, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ as well. So we talked about the levels, the critical levels that we saw, you know, over the past couple of videos, one being the bounce on the 180 SMA support here, which was a higher low from the previous, meaning the uptrend is still intact. We saw the huge day yesterday. Like I said, we broke above the 50 SMA. We broke above the resistance at about 7,100. Today, we actually ended up breaking above the resistance that we didn't break above until today, which was at about 7,200. So right now, you know, the fact that we broke this level here, and if I zoom in a bit, you can probably see it uh, a little bit easier. The fact that we broke this resistance here from back in, this was, I believe, March 3rd, 2019, we peaked to this level. Now, we're looking to hold this level as a new support to potentially fill up to the next resistance, which in this case, we talked about it yesterday, is from the resistance at about from the beginning of uh, the middle rather of October in 2018 at about $7,375. So this could be a potential move here in the NASDAQ if we do end up holding this level and slowly start to pop back up, right? We can fill from about 7,200 back up to around 7,360, maybe $7,400. And if the tech stocks like Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, some of the ones that have been doing very well recently, if they continue to push up, if they continue to see some green days, you know, the NASDAQ very well could pop back up to about 7300 bucks. So that is what I'm looking at, guys, in terms of the major markets. And let's just look for fun. How far are we away from all-time highs? Not saying that we're going to get to all-time highs. Again, just for fun, let's take a look to see how far are we, hypothetically, if we do end up pushing to the all-time highs, 
How much or how many points on an, and a percentage basis do we have to hit in order to get there? So in terms of the NASDAQ, we need to hit about 6% more green as well as what is that? Like 460 points before we do get to that all-time high at about 77.28. So about 6% there. The Dow Jones, let's take a look at the Dow Jones. I believe the Dow Jones... Is it closer? Let me take a look here because I actually haven't done this myself in a couple of weeks here. The Dow Jones, yep, it's a bit closer. It needs about 4.86%, another 1,300 points before we are at those all-time high levels. And the SPX, let's take a look and see how for, uh, you know how much more this one needs from where we are right now. Roughly about 4.6%, about another 138-ish points before we do get to those all-time highs. So that does make sense, guys, because... The October sell-off that we saw through November and December, the NASDAQ actually got hit the hardest out of all of the three major indices that we talk about on this channel. So that's what I'm looking at here, guys, in terms of the major markets. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Where are we headed? Is this going to be another you know, resistance point for the SPX? Are we going to be selling off here? Over the next couple of days, I would love to know what you guys think. Go down below, drop that comment, and let me know. So let's talk about now a couple of stocks. Actually, no, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about whether or not I traded today, and the answer is no, guys. I did not end up trading today. It was just one of those days where I didn't see any opportunities out there, and we all know, or at least the ones that are the people that have been watching the channel for a while, when I don't see opportunities out there in the stock market from the stocks that I've been watching, I don't force any entries. I don't force any trades, right? I wait to see when the opportunities open up, and that is when I capitalize on opportunities. So out of the stocks that, I've, that I was really watching, I didn't really see anything that caught my attention that you know, was screaming, trade me, trade me, trade me, right? And I just sat back, I did my analysis, I was in the group chat throughout the day, right? And I was just breaking down stocks and just really just watching the entire market today on the sideline. I didn't want to force anything because I didn't really see anything that I liked. So that's just really the answer to the question that I trade today, guys. I didn't trade today, guys. I'm being 100% honest with you. I could lie and be like, yeah, I traded, um, you know, this stock for whatever, right? But I'm just being completely honest with you guys. I did not end up trading today, which is going to lead me to the next segment of today's video. What stocks am I watching for tomorrow? And really what stocks have been on my radar starting off here with tesla guys tesla's one that i actually want to point out to you guys here today and tesla could potentially be you know continuing the downtrend pattern today guys it really didn't go the way that i was planning on tesla going which if you guys watched my video yesterday the three stocks i'm planning on swing trading in march this was one of them, guys, Tesla. And I was saying in that video, if we do end up breaking the 50 SMA, you know, that's where I would want to take a position in Tesla. And we did not, guys, we did not break that resistance point. We got rejected pretty hard today. Tesla's down nearly 3% on the day. And another thing I was talking about in that video, was it the five day, five minute? I forget what time frame was I looking at here. Was it the five day, 15 minute? Actually, it might've been this one. I was talking about in yesterday's video, I was talking about how if we were to pull back, I think and hold above the 50 SMA heading into today, that would be a good sign to get in. But if we broke that, you know, that would be a break of pattern. Or was it the break on the 180 SMA? I forget what I did say in yesterday's video, but I do believe it was a break. Actually, no, it was a break of the 180 SMA here on the five day, 15 minute chart. If we did see that, that would be a sign that I'm not trading Tesla. We're still technically holding that level, I guess you can say, which could open up an opportunity tomorrow but in terms of tomorrow i would love to see a break back you know, until the into the mid 280s before even trading Tesla. But back to that 184 hour chart here, guys. The fact that we're you know getting rejected here, 
We're pushing down strongly, and if we take a look here on the 20-day, let's see if it broke the pattern on the 20-day. It slowly is breaking the pattern here on the 20-day with the slow break below the 50 SMA. If it gets back into the 270s, guys, really the moral of the story on Tesla, if it gets back into the 270s, that's not going to be a good sign because that's going to be a break of pattern here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. It's going to be a break of pattern on the five-day, five-minute chart, and it's honestly already a break of pattern um, you know, on the uh, 184 hour chart due to the strong rejection on this, um, you know, 50 SMA on the 184 hour chart. So tomorrow, you know, we're going to probably be testing that 280 level, the 280 support. And, you know, that's just really what I'm going to be waiting for, guys. I really want to see a confirmation of a continuous push here, although we did get rejected. You know, Tesla's in a very iffy spot. And honestly, I'm a little bit um, too scared to trade Tesla right now, to be completely honest with you guys. I'm probably going going to be on the sideline, you know, for this particular stock, but I always, always love, you know, watching Tesla and talking about it here, you know, on this channel. So another one that I'm watching guys is Apple. I know I talked about it earlier in this video. Apple did absolutely amazing today. And really it's been going according to our plan, you know, from that video that I uploaded on Sunday. For those of you guys who watched that video, I was talking about how if Apple were to break 175, which it did this week, clearly this could be a runner back up to about 185, offering it a nice, let's see, I think it was like 5%, yep, 5% margin of profit. And we can see right now, Apple has done just that, right? We broke the 175 level. We're pushing up now in the in the 180 level. Now, all I would want to see before trading Apple, because I did not trade Apple, but it is in my long-term portfolio. So either way, I'm you know making money on Apple here, you know. But for the swing trading portfolio, what I would want to trade it or uh, what would make me want to trade it now is to see a bit of a pullback here, maybe back to 178, maybe 177 for the R side to drop a bit because we do see it's a bit overbought here, which is a little worrisome for me to hop in right now because the risk reward ratio here on Apple. If we zoom in a bit, if we hop in now, since it is in the middle of this channel, ah, ah, this one does not like to cooperate. Since it is in the middle of the channel here at 180, up to the next resistance now, there's about a 3% or 2.7, 3% reward with, you know, a 2.5%, you know, potential for the drop down to that, you know, uh, the, the uh, previous resistance, which is now a new support, right? So I want to see a little pullback, you know, for a better entry point to potentially ride it back up to 185 and that's also going to bring down the RSI a bit making it a better opportunity to hop in in my personal opinion so that's what I'm looking at in terms of Apple everything is looking good guys this one's climbing 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 and let's say tomorrow let's say we pop another five points Probably not going to happen, but let's play hypothetically here if that does end up happening the next spot we're going to need to see you know Back up to 195 would be, you know, the next target price for Apple. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys, because that is 15 points higher from where we are right now. And that's a little bit, you know, us getting ahead of ourselves there. But just, just you know, just planning out the future here, potentially, if that does end up happening. So Apple, that is what I'm looking at in terms of that stock. Another one that did very well today was XOP, guys. XOP has been doing very well today, which is an S&P oil and gas ETF. And for those of you guys that don't know, excuse me, there's actually a pair of ETFs that we trade that trade based upon XOP, and those are Gush and Drip. I feel like I haven't talked about those in a couple of weeks here on my channel, but Gush is an ETF that goes up whenever XOP is going up and whenever XOP is going down, Drip is going up, which is obviously the bear ETF. So let me just quickly clear this drawing set for you guys so we can talk about what potentially could be happening here, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, XOP, which would, you know, help us understand what to trade tomorrow in terms of those inverse ETFs. And of course, you can even trade XOP you know, you don't even have to mess with the ETFs. You can trade XOP itself. So right now, what are we seeing? We're seeing XOP is nearing the resistance at about this 50 SMA that we noticed that it got rejected at the last time we were at at about, what was that, like $30.60 back about eight days ago. That is where we ended up getting rejected. We can clearly see it here at the top of this channel 
right at the top of this trend line channel that I just drew for you guys as well as that 50 SMA. So what I'm going to be waiting for right now, guys, the fact that, you know, XOP has already popped up. Sure, we could end up filling back up to the top of this channel, which could give us another dollar up in XOP, which in turn could help us, you know, or really push Gush up as well, which again is the bull ETF. So we can really play both sides of the spectrum here. So let's say we continue to run up in XOP. We can trade XOP itself. Or we can trade the leverage GTF gush for this push up here. And if we notice a resistance here, we can then hop into the inverse to gush, which is drip, and then ride it back down to this bottom portion of the channel. And this is, you know, it's not 100% going to happen, guys. This is very, very hypothetical. For all we know, we could end up blowing out of this channel, which is going to be a bullish pattern. But let's say, hypothetically, this ends up playing out exactly to what I'm personally saying right now. We do end up popping up here. We could trade gush again, like I said, and then we can hop into the inverse on the downside. Is that going to happen 100%? Probably not, guys. Probably not. But if that does end up happening, that is a way you could potentially trade XOP. So I'm going to be watching, you know, this resistance level, the top of this channel. If we get rejected, you know, drip could potentially be a nice play to the downside. That is if we end up holding this channel that I drew out for you guys. And let's say we break to the upside here. That's going to be a huge breakout bullish pattern on XOP. And the same thing goes to the downside, right? If we break to the downside, Outside here, that's going to be a huge bearish sign, which means drip could be a huge play you know, here over these next couple of weeks. So that is what I'm looking at, guys. XOP, Gush, and Drip. Let me just show you Gush and Drip very quickly. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Gush really has the same chart as XOP. We can see that here. It's in the same, it's in a very similar uh, pattern here. The channel looks pretty similar, right? If we draw the levels again, let me just do it very quickly for you guys. You can see that level there. And uh, the next level here, you guys get the idea, right? You get the idea. So that's what Gush is looking like. And then Drip is going to be a uh, mirrored image almost of what we're seeing in terms of Gush. And this one obviously goes up when XOP sells off. So sell all, or, uh, uh, you know, keep an eye <clears throat> on all those levels that I just talked about. Square is another stock that I'm personally watching here for the potential break at about $77, $78 tomorrow for the potential fill back up to about $81, which would be the next resistance here on Square, which would give it about a 4%, 5% 4 margin of profit if we were to get the confirmation of the break, the hold on the new support, and then the fill up to about $81. So that's what I'm watching, guys. You know, in terms of Square, I also want to talk about natural gas here very quickly. And let me get my charger so the laptop does not end up dying. I feel like every time I record these videos, I forget to plug in uh, my uh, charger here. And I, if the laptop did die, guys, I would be pretty pissed because I don't know if the recording, um, you know, would delete or whatever. But anyways, we see that natural gas here is holding the support at about 270, 280. And if I draw out this candle, or not the candle, the tread line, we can see that, right, if I stretch it out a bit. So if we end up holding this level heading into tomorrow, guys, this could be a good sign that we're really confirming the horizontal pattern that we've been trading in with the resistance at about 290, <clears throat> with the support at about 275 to about 280. And we do see that we are slowly seeing the confirmation of that curl up, the push up from the support level. So you guys could come into play tomorrow if we do end up popping up higher here. And for those of you guys that don't know, you guys is a natural gas future ETF. It goes up in price whenever natural gas is going up in price. So that is what I'm watching here, guys. Natural gas and you guys very, very closely. And let's say the markets sell off tomorrow. TVIX is going to be an ETF I'm watching, which we all know by now is a market ETF that goes up in price whenever you know the stock market, really the SPX, is selling off. And this is a great play 
you know, when the market is very, very red. So let's hop back and see what the SPX is doing now let's, before we do end off this video on the one day, one minute. And we do see it's very bearish still. We are not getting out of that 50 SMA, right? We're still looking like we're heading down. So to the close of the market here, I wouldn't be shocked if we did something like that. If we ended up closing, you know, back down to about 27.89, maybe 27.87, that would not shock me, especially if we get rejected here and pushed to the downside. You know, the Dow Jones guys did have a little run up here, but the same thing is going on. We're getting rejected by the 50 SMA. We're seeing that 50 SMA cross to the downside below the 180 SMA, which is a bearish, bearish move. So, you know, these are little things that I'm going to be watching towards the close of the market here. And as well as, you know, the NASDAQ, we're seeing the little sell off that it's had over the past two hours. We're getting rejected by the 50 SMA. So they're all in a very similar spot here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. Both of those are 100% free and they are linked down below in the description box. I hope you all did very well today. If you did, let me know how you did. Again, down below in the comments section. I appreciate all you guys watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.